Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is to discuss the two different types of the structures uh, known as the truss structure and the frame structure. There are two types of the structure based on the member forces. So, uh, and I will also explain the main differences between these two types of the structures. The truss structure, it can be defined as the type of the structure which is only exert forces in the members which is only exert forces in the member it is no shear force or no bending moment exert forces in member there is no exert force or bending moment in the uh, each member of the truss for example if I consider uh, this is in a triangular uh, type of truss so with the simplest with the hinge and the roller support so when the load is applied on this truss, let's take an example that the load is applied P on the truss. So the member will be only subjected to the tension or compression. There will be only exit forces. Exit forces means that we have only tension in the member or the compression in the member. There is no such bending moment or the shear force in the member. For example, let's suppose due to this load at this beam goes into the uh, tension, this goes into the compression, compression is in tension and this is also in tension, this is in compression and this is in compression as well. I just take an example to show you that there will be only exit forces in the truss member. There is no such shear force of any moment. While if we consider the frame structure, you have three different types of the member forces. We have exit force in the member we have shear force and we have bending moment for example if I consider uh, this is my frame structure frame structure means uh, that your structure composed of the slate beam column uh, uh, it may include the footing but usually the frame structure usually consists of the mainly three components slate beam and column so the frame structure if I consider this is in a beam Column, this is the column, this is the column it's suppose, and this is the beam, and we have also the slit there. If we draw in the, here, so this is a slit like this is a frame structure now. So, this type of frame structure has three types of the forces. For example, the load applied on this beam, let's consider, this is a load applied on this beam. So, we will have the bending moment, like in this case, we will have the bending moment. We will have the shear force, we will have the exit forces as well. For example, the load is acting, uh, electric load, the wind load is acting on the uh, column, so we will also have the shear forces. Right? We will have shear forces in the column and also uh, exit load if the only the load is acting on the column exactly, so we will also have exit forces as well in the column. Or the load is acting uh, towards the beam, so we will also have exit force in the beam as well. So, uh, the main purpose is uh, the, we have three different types of the member forces in the frame structure while we have only one exit force in the member. The second main difference between these two types of the structure is that the uh, load is applied only at joints. That the load is applied only at joints. Right? Let's consider another example. Uh, this is any other type of the frame structure, uh, other type of the truss structure. So the load is applied only at joints. You cannot apply the load on member, but you will only consider the load is applied on the joint. You can see here the two members are connected. So this is joint, this is joint, this is joint. There is no other joint in this truss member, so we cannot apply the load on the member. For example, now this is a member. So you cannot apply the load here. Why? Because there is no such joint in the truss structure. So you are not allowed to apply your uh, demand you to apply your load here on this member. Load should always be applied at the joint. So now in the frame structure, you can apply the load anywhere on your frame. Load is applied anywhere. If I consider this is my frame structure, column and beam, right? So I can apply the load on the column, 
I can apply the pointed load only on the beam. I can apply the moment on the joint as well. Or I can apply the uniformly distributed load on the beam as well. So there is no such way uh, to apply the load uh, either at joint or somewhere. But you can also apply the load at the joint as well here in the frame. So if there is no limitation in the frame structure. You can apply the load anywhere and you can analyze it easily. Uh, these are the two main differences. Uh, the other difference is that the uh, truss structure is not allowed to transfer the moment. The truss structure, no moment transfer has taken place. No moment transfer taken place while uh, if you consider the frame structure at uh, the moment transfer take place at the joint at the pen at the internal hinge you can say at the joint sorry at the joints you have the moment transfer taken place moment transfer at the joint you have moment transfer in the case of the frame structure while there is no moment transfer at the joint uh, in the case of the structure in the case of the truss structure because uh, there is no load, uh, there is no uh, uh, shear force or bending moment you can say, so there is no moment transfer at the joint while you have moment transfer at the joint. So these were the two main different, uh, uh, three main differences between the truss and frame structure and that how you can, can categorize the uh, types of the structure. Hope you guys understand uh, and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video. Oh,